Hi, I'm Dr. Sandra Fico, and we're here at Family Chiropractic Center in Coral Springs, Florida, here in our physical therapy room. And today we're going to be discussing stretches, strengthening, and core for the singer athlete. I get frequent questions and concerns from singer athletes about what type of exercise that they should be doing. And quite frankly, there's a wide myriad of exercises that you can do, activities that you can do, but what's most important is maintaining core, maintaining flexibility, and maintaining strength. Looks can be deceiving. Many times I'll have a singer come in and their physique may not appear to be particularly athletic, but when I test their core, their flexibility, and their strength, the scores are excellent, and that reflects in the youth and vitality of their voice. Believe it or not, many times athletes who are singers and actually play a sport have physical and mechanical insufficiencies that actually create vocal problems for them. One of the biggest ones that we're going to discuss today is the inability to have a lower back flex. We're going to give you some exercises and stretches to counteract that. One of the problems I see with low back insufficiency is lack of flexibility. This makes it very difficult to breathe and properly ventilate. I tell my singers it's necessary to sing with not just your diaphragm and your ribs, but with your entire pelvis and your low back. So we're going to look at an exercise right now which is important for all over athletic singer health. The first exercise we're going to do is what I call cat and table. So what we're going to do is get on all fours and we're going to stretch not the shoulders but the low back. So I'm in this position and I'm going to take a low back stretch by making a cat back, arching the cat back, but from the low back and not the shoulders. Let me show you the difference. Low back, shoulders. We don't want the shoulders engaged. We want to do just the low back. Press, press, press. And as I'm pressing, I'm also lifting and pressing my stomach against my backbone, sucking it in hard and creating an isometric contraction. And it's pretty substantial. And then from there I'm going to release come forward into the table, tipping the pelvis back into the other direction. Repeat it again. Tight, tight. Low back stretch, stretch. I'm in the cat position. Everything's sucked up towards the backbone, holding tight, tight. When releasing it out. Do not make the mistake of trying to affect the cat back by scrunching your shoulders. That's not the uh, objective here. What we're trying to do is get a motion into the low sacroiliac section of the back where a lot of the inflexibility and problems with singers occur. So now that we've got that motion of the cat and table kind of programmed into our body, we know which direction to move to achieve that cat back, the low back, I'm going to take that same motion and I'm going to translate it to a supine position, in other words, head uh, looking up on my back. So we normally have what's called a lordotic curve, and I'm going to illustrate that by emphasizing it in my low back here. If you look onto this section, I'm going to arch my back a little. This is where the lordotic curve occurs. The largest problem that we have here with especially singer athletes, especially ladies who wear very high heels, is many times this lordotic curve is overemphasized. And when that occurs, it's hard to get a deep breath in and sing from your pelvis. So we're going to take that same cat back stretch, but we're going to apply it now to lying down on our backs, and we're going to press into the mat hard while pulling the stomach in tight. And release. In once again. Oh, tight. And release. Many times when I see people doing this type of ab work, one of the fatal mistakes that they make, especially for a singer athlete, is to crunch their neck and their chin. That's very counterproductive to not only good spinal health, but also good singing health. So we're going to talk about that for a moment. And there's a, there's a win-win situation with this exercise involved, because the type of exercise I'm showing you also keeps a youthful chin and stops you from getting any of that funny little waddle that sometimes comes with age. So once again, we're going to lie down on our back. I'm going to press my lordotic spine hard into the ground. And now I'm going to play pigeon with my neck. I'm going to take my nose and bring it to the ceiling like an elevator. Just like those pigeons you see cooing and popping their necks forward. 
and the city square. This does a couple of great things for your neck. <clears throat> it actually um, strengthens the intrinsic muscle fibers and the supporting muscle. It realigns the neck. It moves the synovial fluid through. It gets rid of any excess inflammation and swelling. And it maintains good posture and placement. So now we're going to take the tube movements. We're going to incorporate them. Every time I press my spine into the ground, I'm going to also, so I'm going to cat back into the ground, and I'm going to do the pigeon head at the same time. So here it goes. I'm going to raise my arms so you can see this better. Here we go. Now, if you get bored with this, you can actually um, make up your own little combinations. You can do it with two feet in the air, or you can do it with one foot at a time. You can put hand movements and weights into it and get creative. However you so choose to do the exercise, whatever level you want to work at, whether you're beginner, intermediate, or advanced, this is the basic pull down with the pigeon neck that's going to enhance your singing quality, and also your health. This next stretch and strengthening exercise is many times referred to as child's pose. It's called that because you'll see children sleeping in this position, and it's very conducive to low back strength and flexibility. So we're simply going to take on our knees, stretching forward with the hands, and once again, the stretch is not in the shoulders, but in the low back. So we're going to tip that pelvis the same way we made the cat back, and we're going to lean back onto our heels, keeping a lot of pull down in that back while stretching our hands forward. And as I stretch, I'm going to get lower and lower. It depends on how flexible you are. And this is absolutely wonderful for the low back and creating flexibility and a healthy, not only low back, but pelvic floor. With the child's pose, if you're a flexible person like me and can easily bring knees to your chest, we can do a more advanced form of the child's pose. And this can be done on the edge of a bench, the edge of a chair, the end of a bed. What we're simply going to do is, I'm going to use this little stool to illustrate. I'm going to take the same position, except I'm going to bring my feet hanging off the edge. So you can do this at the edge of your bed, or wherever you can hang off of. And once again, round the back, bring it back, stretch the arms forward. And now look at the stretch that I'm getting in that low back. It's extreme. My knees are all the way to my chest, and the facets of my low back are opening up, and I can take a fabulous deep breath in this position, believe it or not. Which brings us to the next section that we're going to be talking about, which is squats. And that's the position my body is in right now. So squats are next. When I have singer athletes come in who complain of breath control problems and support problems, one of the first things I ask them to do is sit in a chair, because I can learn a lot of things from that. So when you sit in a chair, if you have an issue with the last few inches of your descent into that seat, seated position, and you plop into the chair, it shows me that there's an insufficiency in pelvic floor integrity, and also that plopping motion is very injurious to the low back and the, the pelvic floor. So I would ask those patients, if they're incapable of holding that seated position slowly into the chair, to use a chair with armrests to strengthen themselves and actually support with your arms and practice lowering slowly into the chair. And then once again from that seated position, rising back up. The ideal thing would be to be able to slowly descend, hardly put any weight there and come back up. Do 25 of these. You'll know it. <laughs> Great exercise. Now, taking it to the next level, what we would do is then do what we call a modified squat, which brings us to a lower chair. So let's talk about that for a second. A little bit lower. Same position. Bringing yourself to the squat, hardly touching, coming back up. And you can add the flat back into it, which really makes it more effective. Reach hard and come back up. Reach hard and cat back up, which is even better. 
So flat table, cat back. Flat table, cat back. Good stuff. If you're advanced, you can go to a full squat without the support of the chair. And simply, now, please watch your knees. Anytime you squat, you don't want to bring your knees over your toes this way because that's lack of support for the knee joint. So you want to stick your rear end out, squat down hard, bring it back up. Squat, bring it back up. Squat, bring it back up. Let's talk a minute about seating surfaces and how we sit properly. Very important, especially if you're rehearsing long hours and you're not standing every moment. It's still important to maintain good spinal integrity so you can breathe properly. Now, one of the biggest problems we see with patients coming in with low back, inflexibility, pain, etc., is their seated position, the, the chair that they're working in or sitting in or their car, is that they sink back, and I'm not going to even really do it, but I'm going to show you what happens. They sink into a chair and their knees come up higher than their pelvis. You, almost, you can see I don't even want to do that because it's not good for you. When you sit, the line from your glutes to your knee should be downward. The vector line should be down, not back like this. So adjust your car seat, the seat in your car, or check your couch to make sure you don't sink in because it's very interesting to the low back and it's very counterproductive to good vocal quality because you'll find that you're not able to breathe from a weakened pelvic floor. And by the way, one thing we also have to remember is pelvic floor instability and insufficiency leads to incontinence in later life. So we want a strong pelvic floor, not just for good singing voice, but also good quality of living. So we've incorporated some low back flexibility exercises and talked about the squat. And now we move on to the dreaded wall sit. <laughs> My singers don't like this one because it's probably the most challenging, but it does a lot for the vocal uh, apparatus. So what we're going to simply do is find a wall. You're going to, once again, take that lordotic curve flat and hard against the wall. And now, how low can you go is the next question. Flatten the back, hold it there, hold the tummy in, and sit. And you will feel it. Now, another option for this is also singing while you're in that position, which I'm not going to do for you today. You can do that on your own. But when you sing during any of these exercises, it helps not only to um, improve your core strength, but also improve your breathing and balance. One other thing that we can also do is sing while lifting a leg to the front and lifting a leg to the side. And then, of course, everything has to be done bilaterally, so we're going to lift the leg to the other side, front and side. And while you're doing this, you can vocalize, you can do um, scales, whatever vocal, whatever vocal exercise you like. So this concludes our short series on exercises for the singer athlete. Stay tuned, because in the future there will be more coming. Stay healthy, sing well.